Hello, welcome to my channel, Jesus Wants You. I'm Nikki Pratt. I hope you guys are having or had a wonderful day today. It's about 9.45 p.m. where I am. I don't know where you are or where you're viewing me from. Um, welcome to my channel. Uh, before I get started in what I'm going to uh, talk about today, um, as I said in my last video, I've been, I kind of noticed that um, the videos I'm doing about Jesus are not being looked at very much. And again, I know we get a little busy and, um, you know, sometimes we have a lot going on and we don't get a chance to, you know, come to to YouTube and um, I know you have family and you have a lot going on but or you may be saying look Nikki I know about Jesus I don't need to hear no more about Jesus I, I think I got enough about Jesus I have Jesus that's that's good that's all good I am so grateful um, that you do and that you do have Jesus um, although there may be somebody out there that does not. Is there any friend, family member uh, that you know of? Not saying that you're judging, because a, a lot of people will take offense to that and say, why you send me a video about it? I don't need to hear about that. You know, explain to them in the most diplomatic way. You know, just say, you know, I, I like this video. I thought... Maybe you would like to see it, you, you know, fix it up. Uh, be very diplomatic about it. Um, and, and the reason why I'm saying this is not so I can get uh, 100,000 views or I'm trying to do this for me. Let's be real. I'm doing this for Jesus. Uh, you know, I want the views for him. You know, he said, until all the gospel to the world be preached, you know, the gospel needs to be out there. And not enough, you know, there is a lot of preachers that are not preaching the cross, not talking about the cross, not talking about Jesus. They're talking about prosperity and how to get more money and how to uh, make you feel good and all these feel good uh, messages and you know, doing everything for the gain of themselves. I'm doing this for the gain of the reward in heaven. And because that's what we are all called to do. Like I said in my last video, we are all missionaries. All you have to have is a heart for Christ and for Jesus. My whole mission is to get the word out there some kind of way. And my prayer always, if it's just be one that listen. I plant the seed, another one comes along and water it, and he giveth the increase. That's my whole mission. That's all I care about. But it is very important, you guys. I have 78 subscribers. I am elated. I do see the fruit of my labor. Yes, there is means to the madness. Not bad madness. Righteous madness. Um, because there is a war going on that we fight out there every day. You know, we wrestle not against uh, flesh and blood, but with principalities and high places. And there are so many people that need this word. There are so many people that need to hear the message of Jesus. You know, I'm, I'm just me. And uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit today, of what I'm going to bring today, um, with that said, I want to try and get you, the viewer, to bring you that day, to that day. I want this video to be almost like as if you were there. As we say sometimes, a fly on the wall. If you were somewhere watching or I want, what I'm saying is, I want to put you in that scene. I want to put you there. To, you know, so 
like as if you were a witness to what was going on, what happened that day before Jesus went to the cross and during and on the cross, okay? Um, okay. In Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 46, tells of when Jesus was with the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. Um, let me see if I'm saying that right. Uh, yeah, Gethsemane. I think that's how you said. And um, the the scripture tells us how he was he was sorrowful. He was um, heavy hearted, and he went praying and praying. And the disciples, you know, he wanted them to be up. And pray with him. They were asleep. So I'm going to try to read the story. And I want you to, if you will, throughout me reading the scripture. And then I'm going to go to Jesus on the cross. And I want you to try to depict, try to place yourself there as I read it. Okay? All right. Matthew chapter 26, verse 36. Then come at Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death tarry ye here and watch with me and he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed saying O oh, my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not as i will but as thou will and he cometh unto the disciples and found them asleep and said unto Peter, What, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and he prayed saying, O oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And I'm going to stop here a little bit. In Luke 22 and 44, it says that basically Jesus was in so much, he had so much anxiety, so much stress, he was overwhelmed with the, the feelings and knowing what was about to happen to his sweat was as drops of blood. You can read that in Luke 22, verse 44. I'm going to continue reading. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them, and he went away again and prayed. The third time saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples, and he said unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at the hand, doth betray me. So, with all that said, Jesus was in so much anguish that he prayed not once but three times, praying and calling out to his Father, Father, please, if it be your will, not my will, that this cup be taken away from me. But Jesus knew he had a task at hand. He knew that he had... A job to do. 
he was sent here on earth. And later you read in the scriptures, he said that this must happen because the scriptures must be fulfilled. Remember, Jesus came in the volume of the book. Okay, now I'm going to take you to the scene of the cross. When Jesus dies on the cross. Very early in the morning, the soldiers brought Jesus to Pilate. The governor at the time, Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, Yes, I am. This upset the chief priests because they were jealous of him and the friends he made. He had made with the Jews. Pilate listened to the complaints of the people that brought Jesus, but he couldn't find any reason to punish him. Pilate questioned Jesus, but Jesus didn't stick up for himself. He knew that they wouldn't listen anyway. He had done nothing wrong. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people and said to them, I have talked to Jesus, and I found no reason to kill him. After they heard that all the people shouted, We want Jesus! We want Jesus! Release Barabbas instead, they yelled. Barabbas had been in jail because he had killed someone, and the people wanted him to be free. And Jesus to be punished. The chief priests went around telling people lies about Jesus so that they would be afraid of him and want to kill him. Pilate didn't like this one bit. He wanted to let Jesus go. So he tried to talk to people, talk to the people, but they didn't let him. They just kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate tried again, yelling, What has Jesus done wrong? I can punish him, but then I must let him go. He doesn't deserve to die. But the people just shouted louder to crucify Jesus, and Pilate wanted to please the crowd, so he freed Barabbas and sent Jesus to die. The soldiers led Jesus into the palace and made him put on an old royal robe, and they twisted together a crown of thorns to put on his head. Then they made fun of him and said, Hail, King of the Jews! They didn't understand that he was a king. That's why they made fun of him. Next, the soldiers led Jesus toward a hill called Golgotha. They made him carry the cross on his back, but Jesus couldn't carry it the whole way. He fell down, beaten, lashed, abused, cut, spit on, torn, his skin ripped to the bone. His back was whipped and hurt so much that Jesus couldn't handle the weight of the cross on his shoulders. A man named Simon happened to be near Jesus when he fell, and the soldiers grabbed him and made him carry the cross, the cross the rest of the way. The soldiers offered Jesus wine mixed with myrrh. This was supposed to help make it less painful, but Jesus refused it. When they reached the top of the hill, they nailed Jesus to the cross. There were three crosses. Jesus was in the middle, and there was a criminal on his right and on his left. Pilate made a sign to be put on the cross. It read what he was being punished for, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. The soldiers watched Jesus and made fun of him. They even divided up his clothes to be even more mean. And some people walked by and shouted, You saved others! Why can't you save yourself? Jesus could have saved himself, but he chose not to. He wanted to save us instead. Jesus ignored the people, but he did see his mother, his aunt, and some other women he knew. Jesus felt bad for his mother. 
She was so sad to see her son die. Then Jesus saw one of his disciples close to his mother, and he said, Mother, here is your son, and friend, here is your mother. Jesus couldn't say too much. He was very weak. But he wanted his friend, the disciple, to be like a son to his mother and take care of her. And from that day on, he did. Later, Jesus could not handle the pain any longer. And he said, after he dropped his head, It is finished. That is when Jesus bowed his head and went to heaven. Suddenly, a huge curtain that hung at the temple was torn in half, from the top to the bottom, and a man that had wanted Jesus to die saw all of this, and he said, Surely, this man was the Son of God. He realized he had been wrong about Jesus. Okay, that ends the story of Jesus being on the cross. You know, in the story it tells of Pilate, he knew, he knew Jesus was innocent. He pleaded with the crowd, but the crowd kept yelling, crucify him, crucify him. And sometimes even in our own lives, when we know that something or someone or something isn't right, we tend to go along with the crowd and please the crowd or be a follower instead of a leader. If Pilate was a truly, indeed, a leader, that wouldn't happen that day. But we all knew that there was a plan, that was God's plan for Jesus to die on that cross that day. Because had he not, he wouldn't have taken away the sting of death. We all would be deserving of every judgment, deserving of the death that was meant for us. But Jesus bore every beaten, every scar, every stripes that we are healed from today. He had a crown of thorns on his head, sweat, blood, tears, agony, and even while he was on the cross, he saved the thief that was hanging on the cross. Even before he was about to be taken to the cross, and that person cut off that other person's ear. He healed him right then when he knew what was about to happen. All that Jesus went through before the cross and on the cross, he did for you and I. The Bible said, if you fear a death, if you have any fear of death at all, you don't have to. The Bible says Jesus took that away. He took away the sting of death. You don't have to worry about that. The Bible also says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We no longer have to deal with that. But you have to accept the gift that he left for us. You have to accept what he did on that cross for you. Time is running out, people. Um, while you still have a chance, I plead with you, I beg of you, God is faithful and just. The first, the first gift that God gave man on earth was dominion. Second was choice. 
we have a right to choose which path we take, which road we take. You have a choice. He's not going to make you. He's faithful and just. He's long-suffering, though. I mean, just think of all the times before you, if you are saved, all the times that he strived and he strived. I can remember the days that I know Jesus was speaking to me. I know he was knocking on my heart. But I ran from it. I can tell you countless times. But we thank God for his long suffering and his mercy and his grace that abounds because if it was up to us and I mean even with us when we're trying to you know minister to people and they're acting like they don't want to hear it you know we tried two or three times and we'd be like well the heck with you you know but Jesus is long-suffering he continues and he continues and he continues. Anyway, I hope you guys um, enjoyed this video. Um, stay prayed up and look out uh, for the next video. Also, before I end this video, I had another, another prophetic dream last night regarding the blood moon um, and some things that happened or transpired during that dream. Um, I'll possibly be telling that dream tomorrow along with um, some other things. So um, again, I want you guys to share these videos. Even if you don't want to watch it, share it. Um, Stay prayed up. Keep your lamps full. Do that with the word. Okay? I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.